Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. This week I'm addressing the probably number one question I get asked and that is how I get the results I get with my salt. And I really have sort of mentioned on a number of occasions that I do think it's about um, a number of different factors. Different salts might have different effects, different papers might have different effects, different paints might have different effects. The amount of water that you use with your salt may have uh, some different effects. And so last week I got asked the question again and I thought I really need to check what kind of salt I'm using. I'm using table salt, but I didn't know if there was anything special about my salt. And when I looked at the container, I saw that it was non-iodized salt. So that was the first time I was coming or becoming aware of this. And I thought, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe this could be the thing. I don't know. So I went on the hunt for some iodized salt and I am starting off this week's painting process with an experiment using non-iodized salt and iodized salt to see if that could be the magic factor. The painting really evolved from there. So <laughs> I started with the idea of experimenting and I kind of had an idea of what I was going to do and then when the effects showed up the way they did I was led to go in a different direction and so the painting itself will become a geologic abstract of sorts reminds me a little bit of a geode and someone had asked me a while back if I could at some point paint a painting of a geode this is probably the closest I'm gonna ever get to painting a geode <laughs> I think geodes are beautiful um, but I've never kind of gone down that road. So today is that day. <laughs> so starting off experimenting with salt and then some discoveries are made and I think I finally have put at least part of the mystery to rest. <laughs> so join me for this week's process. Hopefully you'll feel like painting with me and if you're just feeling like relaxing and taking it easy because wherever you are it is super hot like it is here <laughs> i get it grab a glass of something cold sit down relax and watch me paint i would love to have you along so that's it let's get going with the painting process I have cut two pieces of Arches watercolor paper and I have taped them each to their own little piece of plexiglass. On the left hand side I'm going to work with the salt I usually work with and it's basically a non-iodized salt, non-iodized table salt, um, the kind that we use for cooking. And then on the left, I kind of had to go digging for it because it turns out we don't have a lot of iodized salt. <laughs> so Damien was the champion yesterday. He found some iodized salt in our camping equipment <laughs> in this little packet and I pulled it out. Now, one thing to note is that there's only 0.01% iodine in that salt. So... I highly doubt that's going to be the factor that makes a difference, but you never know. So I'm trying it anyway, and we'll see how it works out. Because this is an experiment and I'm really trying to figure out if the salt is the thing that's reacting differently on my paper, I am going to do my very best to stick with adding the same colors and the same amount of water and the same amount of paint to each piece of paper. The only difference will be the salt that I'm using. Now, it's me. <laughs> I am not a robot and so I don't know that I'm going to do it exactly 
the same, but I'm going to do my best and hopefully that'll be enough. But I think in the end, with the results showing, we will see whether or not it is the salt that is contributing to making these effects that I have. So first I'll start working with the salt I typically use, which is the non-iodized salt. I'm just showing you the consistency of the salts. It's a little granulated, but it's, it is a little bit like a fine powder, but it is not a powder. It is still crystals, though, though they are pretty fine. Okay, now I'm gonna start moving on to adding the iodized salt. I'm just pulling it out of the little container that I poured it in just to show you what it sort of looks like. It's a little bit more crystallized than the salt I have in my uh, little plastic container there and I think it's probably only because it's very old. <laughs> so, I don't know how long that's been in our camping equipment, so you know that's a factor to take into consideration. But again, let's remember that this salt only has 0.01% iodine in it. So if iodine is the magic factor, it probably isn't enough to make a change. Again, I decided to take a little time lapse of the paper as it was drying because I think it's really cool to see the effects coming to life on the paper. And it really is quite remarkable what's happening, but what's not remarkable is the difference between the two. In fact, I think they're about the same. So if it's not the salt, because the iodized versus the non-iodized salt basically did just about the same thing on the paper, I'm guessing, and this is probably an educated guess because I've observed this before, that it's not the salt, it's the quality of the paper. So I've pulled out some of my less expensive Canson paper. It's a student grade quality, like quality paper. So it's not high quality, um, it's not 100% cotton or anything. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this paper that I did with the other paper, which was Arches paper, and we're going to see if there's a difference. I'm not going to apply the paint in exactly the same way because I hope to create some paintings with um, this paper. I don't want to just let it go to waste. And so I'm going to do it a little bit differently, but I am going to use the same paint and I'm going to apply the same salt and we'll see. And if I am correct, which of course I know, I already know the results. <laughs> My friends, it is not about the salt at all. It is about the paper. And I have mentioned this before. And you will see once I put them each side by side, once I'm done adding the color and apply the salt, let it dry, and we compare them side by side, to me, there is a big difference. And again, 
In this instance, the thing that changed was the paper quality, nothing else. And so, you know, sometimes people will say, well, you know, don't waste your money on more expensive paper because it's not worth it for what you're doing. And it's really up to you to decide. But if you're really wanting to create those salt effects, this is the thing to keep in mind. It's the quality of your paper. So anyway, I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag before, <laughs> before I'm even done. But if there is a difference, you will see, and we're gonna get there very shortly. So I finished adding the color and now I'm in the process of adding the salt. And once I'm done applying the salt, I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to try to do another time lapse so we can see what happens. So this is the paper as it's drying. Um, I know, really exciting <laughs> watching paper, <laughs> watching paint dry. <laughs> exciting stuff happening on this channel. <laughs> But really, there is a difference, and I'm sure you can see it as well. Now that they're both dry, let's have a look at the Canson paper next to the Arches paper. And as you can see, as I can see, and I hope you can see as well, there is a huge difference with how the salt reacted with the paint on the Canson paper versus the Arches paper. There is some texture that was created by the salt on the Canson paper, but it looks a lot more subtle and it looks less dramatic, if you will. On the Arches paper, there's, to me, what looks like a pretty big difference. I mean, the colors remained a little bit more vibrant. The marks that were left by the salt were what I think maybe more interesting. Um, but it really depends on what you're trying to do. I think what happened with the Canson paper was also interesting, but I'm definitely more wowed by what happened on the Arches watercolor paper. And so when I'm painting a background, if I'm working on a higher quality paper, being an intuitive painter, I have a higher likelihood of being inspired to move into a certain direction if what shows up on my paper after the first layer is more exciting. And so that Arches watercolor paper is one of the reasons I reach for it most of the time. It just has, for me, better effects. And it could be something for you to consider as well. Now, don't break the bank. If you feel like you don't really want to go down that road, there is some interesting marks happening on the Canson paper as well, but I'm sure you can notice that there is definitely a difference. And I hope this answers your question as to why I get the effects that I get. I really do think it's the paper more so than anything else. Again, like I've mentioned before, the paint can have um, some effects. The salt, of course, if you're using fine grain salt versus coarse grain salt, you're gonna get different effects. But we're talking about the same salt on two different types of paper here, and this is how it turned out. Since I'm really loving what showed up for me on the Arches watercolor paper, I am going to leave the colors as they are, and I'm just gonna focus on adding some details now. And I'm going to slowly but surely start building this painting into what, at this point, I'm not really sure what. <laughs> uh, I am going to follow some of the lines that I'm seeing in the paper that the salt created for me. And as I go, I'll probably make a determination as to the direction I want this painting to take. But for now, I'm just following my intuition and I am adding some lines using my fountain pen.
It's as I was working on adding these lines that I started looking at my painting and it started to feel like it could become a geode and that's why I went down that road and took that direction with my painting. Um, it's, you know, it could have become just about anything else. Uh, just looking at the paper and the way the paint is laid out, it almost looks like a sunburst at the top of the painting and that you can see the dark sky, the dark spatial sky <laughs> around the sun, um, you know, radiating the sun's heat waves or light rays. Um, so again, it could have become just about anything, but it started to feel like a geode for me, so I decided to go down that road. I really haven't seen very many geodes in my life. In fact, I've probably seen more images of geodes than I've seen actual geodes. But what I do know of them is that they are beautiful. And I love the fact that Mother Nature creates them. It's like pretty amazing what nature can create. <laughs> I, I've mentioned it on a number of occasions. I am in awe of what Mother Nature creates for us out here on our beautiful planet. And geodes are one of these creations. And so it's kind of an, um, a fun little ode to Mother Nature again, that I'm working on creating, you know, an abstract geode. I'm not gonna say it's gonna look exactly like a geode because it probably won't, <laughs> but, you never know. Um, what it will look like is a unique painting by me and that is something I will definitely be happy to have created. <laughs> Considering my experiment at the beginning of this painting process, I am very curious to know how many of you out there were surprised by the fact that it's not actually the salt that made the biggest difference in the effects that were created by the salt, that it was actually the paper. How many of you would have been surprised by that? and Or how many of you, I guess, um, knew that that was going to be the big factor, the paper versus the salt. Um, please let me know. I, I really am curious to hear what your thoughts are on that. And I'm also curious to know if you have different types of paper on hand and if you do experiment using different types of paper when you're experimenting and playing in your creative process. I tend to experiment a lot and I love doing so because I tend to learn quite a bit as I'm doing it and that's how I figure out my favorite products. It's also how I figure out the different ways my products work and it's how I continue to develop my personal painting style. I know I talk about that a lot 
But I think as artists, it's something that we all want to be able to achieve is to get to a point where we have a painting style that feels like our own. And for me, the best way to do that is to experiment and play with our products. So how do you feel about that? I tend to really love developing my layers of color more than I did today and the, one of the reasons I wanted to leave things as they were is I thought the effects on the paper were already quite beautiful and I wanted to preserve as much of them as possible. But now I need, or I, I want to, uh, but I will, I will admit I feel the need. <laughs> to really add some dark value contrast because what's in the background is pretty much all or very similar in value. And even though it's beautiful, I need something to have a little bit more of an impact. And adding all of this black is definitely helping to make what's in the background also pop more. And it's bringing more dimension and depth to the painting as well. So I worked initially with both my fountain pen and then my brush pen to add a lot of the lines and the detail work that we're seeing. And now I'm working with my Cuddle Loba dotting pen to add some stippling because that is also another great way to add dimension to a painting. As I was working on adding the stippling to my painting, I also decided that I wanted to thicken the black lines that I've created at the top part of my painting because eventually I want to add some gold to this area and I want to make sure that the gold really stands out and so the black will help it to stand out because it's much darker. The gold tends to be of a lighter value because it's reflective of the light and so it plays really really well that uh, iridescent colors play really really well against black and so I'm thickening my line so I can add some gold, gold a little bit later and um, I'm really excited to do that. I think it's going to look really cool in this painting.
In all of my excitement to add the gold, of course, I forgot to turn on my camera. <laughs> ah, what can you do? C'est la vie. So as you can see, I am working with my ruling pen to add the gold. I'm kind of wishing I had not done that because I added way too much water to my paint and there's so much liquid, so much water in my paint that it made using the ruling pen a lot more messy than I was hoping it would be. Uh, I'm starting to get it a little bit more under control, but mm, <laughs> it did not really work out as well as I was hoping it would. My hope was that it was going to create some really, really fine lines, finer lines than I would have been able to create with my fine tip brush, uh, my micro mini brush, but it, it didn't work out that way. But you know me, that's okay. I'm going to roll with the punches and see how I can turn this around. Once the gold paint had dried, I basically went back in with my fountain pen and I added a little bit more contour to the areas where the gold paint had bled. And that seemed to fix the quote unquote issue I was having <laughs> with my painting. I'm much more happy with it now. I feel like it was necessary to have that black to help the gold contrast. Um, with the rest of the painting because gold on its own on top of these colors it would look pretty but it wouldn't stand up stand out enough you need to have that dark value contrast to really help it stand out um, because the gold is too much like the other values in the painting and so darkening those lines and um, around the gold i think helped a lot and now i'm coming in with my extra fine tip pen and I'm going to add some vertical lines just to complete the painting. I want um, to add just a few more details. For me, it'll feel like it's a more complete painting this way.
I guess because I have two different pieces of paper that I'm working on, I'm really creating a diptych of a geode and not just a geode. <laughs> um, but I hope you can see that the the two images sort of work together because I've tried my best to continue the lines so that they um, feel like they're a cohesive composition and that you can see how it could be one piece taken into two different um, parts of it. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, I guess that's where I wanted to go. I had a sort of an idea in the beginning and then it completely changed on me when I saw the effects of the salt. And I'm super happy that I went down this road because I do think it looks very neat. Having now completed this little diptych of a geode, I can see how recreating or trying to paint a full geode on a bigger piece of paper would probably look really cool using watercolors and the effects of salt. And who knows, maybe I'll give that a try someday. We'll just have to wait and see if my intuition guides me in that direction. <laughs> This little experiment has definitely been fun to paint and I hope it was also enjoyable for you to watch. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating, sweet friends! <laughs>